Okay. So welcome to the mechanical engineering video chat and I'm going to begin by sharing my screen and we're going to go through some presentations that I have for you. Um, so because we have to do all of this virtually, it's a little bit different, but um, I want you to know that uh, I am here to help you in every step of the way. So if there's any questions that come up, obviously put them in the chat and we'll address them at the end. And if at the end of this presentation, something comes up that uh, you didn't realize you had questions about, you can always email me and we could talk about that a little bit later. So my name is Karen Lewis and I'm your academic advisor for your first year at Rensselaer. So welcome. I'm really excited to be working with you. Uh, I advise mechanical, civil and environmental engineers. So sometimes I slur my words and say civil instead of mechanical. Don't worry, we're going to get through it all. <laughs> but uh, what you need to know tonight, the most important things here, um, academic advising in the SOE. So the School of Engineering, which is what SOE stands for, we deal with a lot of abbreviations and acronyms. Uh, the School of Engineering is comprised in multiple majors and um, we're a unified office that advises all of the majors within the School of Engineering. We're going to talk tonight about your curriculum planning, so your schedule planning for fall, and also the resources on how to register for your classes, and all of your questions will be answered. So it's going to be a productive night, and um, I look forward to spending it with you. But I'm not going to keep all, keep you very long, I promise. So. Academic Advising in the School of Engineering. So, as I mentioned, uh, I'm going to be working with you for your first year, and we actually have a partnership with faculty advisors. So, the way that that works is you and I are going to be meeting your entire first year as often or as little as you'd like. You're required to have at least one meeting with me, and then after your sophomore, the beginning of your sophomore year, you will be assigned a faculty advisor in mechanical engineering. So that faculty advisor will resume your advising until you graduate. So how that looks specifically would be that you and I are going to go over Haas requirements. You're going to hear Haas a lot and your four year plan. So what we do is we lay out all the courses and how they're going to look each semester. So when you meet with your faculty, you don't have to go over all the logistic details. You're going to have more time to discuss fun things, if you will, about your major, like your career goals and um, research advice, any kind of mentorship that they recommend, study, study abroad, internships, arch planning, all the things that are a little bit more the nitty gritty in your major. We deal with the logistics and they talk about more major specific things. So these are the fabulous ladies in the School of Engineering Hub. And the reason I put the slide in is because I want you to know that um, we are all there to assist you. So if you had any questions, say for example, mechanical is um, the major that you're thinking you want to pursue, but you're not entirely sure, and maybe you're thinking about doing electrical, I might pull Kara, who is over on the screen, into our conversation or our meeting, so you can ha have your questions answered by the electrical uh, advisor. Or if you were interested in biomed, I might pull Valerie in or something along those lines. So we work as a team to provide support for you and we all have different roles. So we kind of multitask along the way. Now, at this point, um, I have emailed you the registration guides and, uh, you know, I most of you have reviewed it. I know it's a lot of information and we're going to touch on some key points in that tonight just to kind of footnote it if you will. And at this point we're in the video chat where we're going to discuss all of that and then the next step we're going to meet personally for uh, advising session, your first advising session officially before you register for classes. Now 
that's going to be an appointment that you make. I'm going to show you how to do that so you could do it at your convenience. I'm not going to come knocking at your door and say, hey, you didn't make your advising appointment because some some students feel confident in their capabilities and they don't necessarily need advising for the first semester and that's fine. Um, but I'm here to support you and I strongly advise that you do meet with me because sometimes there's things that you might not have considered that um, we might discuss. So I think it's an important meeting to have. So let's talk about your curriculum planning um, and your fall schedule. If you're joining us late, can you just please mute your microphone? Thank you. Okay. So your fall semester and pretty much every semester that you're going to register for classes, I'd like to target a 16 credit point. And the reason why I do that is because 16 credits is what's been evaluated to um, be a good balance of courses that would get you to graduate within the four years that we have set aside for your curriculum, the eight semesters. And also in the instance that Say, for example, one of the classes has to be dropped for what there's a variety of reasons you might drop a class in a semester. If you drop down to 12 credits, you're still a full time student. But if you drop below 12 credits, things get a little messy with financial aid and housing and all of these other requirements that you have. So we always want to maintain full time status as a student. So 16 credits is a good target to have because it allows you to do that within. Um, while remaining full time and, and advancing towards your degree. So the fall semester is going to look like a math class, a science class, an engineering course or a science course, which we're going to talk about and your Haas class. So for mechanical engineers, this is the template that is in your registration guide. And if you're having difficulty finding it or you need a copy, you can always email me. I'm happy to send you one. It's 129 credits to complete this core, um, this curriculum. So four years and you're going to be taking in your first semester a math class like calculus um, science. I would definitely recommend chemistry and you could do IEA, which is your engineering 1100 class introduction to engineering analysis or your physics one. If you took physics one in high school and did OK, then you could do IEA if you didn't or concerns about physics, I would rather you stick with physics. And that's something that we can discuss in detail on those personal meetings that we're going to have. And then you're going to take it a one credit exploratory course. We have um, in the first semester engineering graphics in CAD. Now some of you, because high school does cover this stuff for many of you, if you have CAD experience and you enjoy CAD, sign up for CAD. I think it's awesome. If you don't, you might want to go a different route and it would be engineering processes, which is in the spring semester over here. If you can see what I'm pointing at it too is a one credit class. Now engineering processes is fun. I'm not going to I'm not going to candy code it. A lot of students love the class. It's in the machine shop and you get to build stuff with your hands and you learn all about the tools that, you know, the lathes, the mills, the whole nine. So you might want to do engineering processes in your first semester and postpone CAD until the spring after you're fully acclimated to being on campus. So either one of those is perfectly acceptable. And then we're going to register for a Haas class and I'll go over Haas in a little bit more detail because all of my emails from incoming first year students has been about Haas, so I suspect you guys are going to have questions as well. So we'll cover that a bit too. So registration begins on July 13th. Now you're going to receive a time ticket and I know that there's been language with multiple emails from multiple people that you should have had it already. The registrar is not mailing out the time tickets until around July 6th. So that's next week. So don't worry if you don't have a time ticket yet, you shouldn't. And um, one thing that's really important about those time tickets is they're unique to each individual student. So I might have a time ticket for 9 a.m. My friend might have a time ticket for noon. You want to register at the exact time that your time ticket opens because it's going to give you the best chances of getting the schedule that you want. 
courses are going to fill up quickly and I don't want you to worry if you're registering on the 15th as opposed to the 13th. They allocate seats for every section for registration, so everybody is given an equal shot. But if you are sleeping through your time ticket, you're going to be a little bit SOL because um, we really, you know, we have a system and you have to do your part too. You have to work for it, okay? So we'll talk about that too, um, but keep a lookout on your RPI email. Get in the habit of checking your RPI email all the time because we're no longer sending communications to your personal email because you're in college. So RPI email is gonna be your go-to for all communication from me and most likely from the FYE, which is your first year experience as well. So now we're going to talk a little bit about resources and um, I have a couple of different things and a new one that um, students brought up to my attention last week. So I'll share that with you, a brief overview of that as well. So if you looked in the registration guides, we had YAKS as being a schedule builder and it's really helpful in order to build a schedule because it allows you to see all your conflicts right in front of you. But one of the problems that I was encountering when I was meeting with students to help them build schedules is merely the fact that YAX has been really slow. And I don't know if you guys have experienced it, but there's a new building software called Quax. We're not very creative with names, but it's fun. So I will show you that before we end the webinar tonight because it's very similar to YAX, but it doesn't seem to have that same speed issue that YAX has been encountering lately. So it's another tool to add to your toolbox when you're building your schedule. And SIS is the forum that you're actually gonna go on to register for your classes. Can everybody just make sure that their microphones are on mute? Cause I'm getting a little bit of feedback. And your third resource is me, your academic advisor. So SIS is gonna be something that you're gonna look at periodically to check on the status of the courses that you're registering for. It gives you real-time information about the number of seats that are available in section. And then you can also use me, email me, um, set up appointments with me, however you want to proceed. So we have questions and I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now just so I can um, get to the chat room. So if you guys have any questions going forward, um, I want you to start typing them in and then we're going to talk about a couple of other things as well. So feel free to go. Can I request a specific time and date for my time ticket? Um, unfortunately, the registrar is responsible for manufacturing the time tickets and they don't really make any concessions. Um, Yes, I will definitely give you the link to the website that's not Yaks. Um, but as far as if you have any concerns, Braden, about the specific time that you're going to register, I would wait until after you receive your time ticket. And um, then I would email the registrar directly to uh, request or make an amendment to that. But if you're going to be out of town or if there's a concern, I have students that have their parents actually registering for classes for them and that's something I'm happy to meet with parents if there's questions and concerns. Okay, so we're going to cover the link that is not the website for YAKS in just a minute. Um, I'm going to actually bring it up right now and I will show that to you. So it's quacks.org and if you look, I'm going to share my screen in just a sec. Um, let's see here. Get out of this and we're going to go right into all of my windows are open because I have a lot of resources for you guys tonight. This is the quack screen. So it's basically the same as YAKS. You can pick your courses and it gives you a little description. It allows you to toggle all sections. You hit schedule and your courses appear. So the format's very similar. But if you're noticing, there isn't that lag time. So I can email this out to you guys after we're done, but this is kind of 
what I'm thinking is kind of cool because students at RPI are super innovative, so they're coming up with new programs if we're running into issues, which I, I really appreciate. So that is going to be quacks and I'm going to get back over to my chat now. And um, do I have any recommendations for a three year graduation? Well, there are students that express interest in graduating early, and I certainly understand that. Um, there is time where that would be a good part to discuss your AP credits. If you're coming in with a lot of credits, an earlier graduation might be a possibility for you. And really, um, you know, we can always talk about the possibility of additional courses. You can register up to 21 credits at Rensselaer each semester without getting additional approvals from your advisor and the class dean. So I don't I don't authorize credit overloads in the first semester because I want you to get your bearings on campus and understand the workload that's required of you. But future semesters, that's always a possibility for you to discuss um, that with me and can develop a plan of study that would include the possibility of graduating early. So that's more of a, a personal thing, depending on the credits that you come in with and what your goals are and also how you handle credit overloading ultimately, okay? The best website to design schedule. Um, I think it's Quacks and I appreciate um, Dale put, put the, uh, the link in the chat there for me. So I appreciate that as well. Use that and um, also book an appointment with me and we could share screens and we could build schedules together. I want you to have a lot of schedules because in the instance that one of your 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 perfect schedule fills up, I want you to have a lot of backups and also remember. At the start of the semester registration will be open for two weeks and what that time allows is us to make additional changes to our schedule if they're necessary. If you're happy with your schedule, perfect. We move on, you attend classes, all is good. But if there's something that comes up where maybe you got your AP scores and they weren't exactly what you expected and we need to change your schedule, we can always do that over the summer or even as the semester begins. So I don't want you to put too much stress into the schedule because there are things we could do to manipulate it if necessary. What do we do if our AP, look at that segue. What do we do if our AP scores from this year aren't available until we actually have to register for courses? Well, the best thing you can do, oh, we got a little, this is my daughter, Amelia. Guys, if you're gonna be meeting with me this summer, you will meet her, so I figured I'll introduce you now. Okay, go ahead, okay? Thank you. Okay, all right, anyway, if your AP scores have not come in yet, um, I want you to trust your gut. Basically, like I said, we can make adjustments. If you took calculus and you think that you're gonna do, you did well on the exam, you think you're getting a five and it's BC, you got Calc 1 and Calc 2 credit, register for Multivare or DiffEQ. Either one of those is perfectly fine and we can always meet to discuss the benefits of one over the other in a private meeting. But I want you to do that because trust yourself and make that plunge. Now, in the event that it didn't work out the way that you anticipated, once we get your AP scores, we'll make those adjustments and we'll put you in the accord, the class that's appropriate for what your grades were. So I always say plan ahead and hope for the best. And if we need to move backwards, we move backwards. It's totally acceptable. Um, let's see where we are here. Okay. Would you mind telling us how to schedule a meeting with you? Also, is it reasonable that you help me build my schedule from scratch during the meeting? Both of the answers to that are yes. I'm happy to show you how to book a meeting with me. In fact, if you open up an email from me, um, you will find that um, in my signature, there's a link specifically, and I'm gonna send the, um, the information about Quacks out to you guys after this meeting's over, so you'll see a link from me to book a meeting. Click on that link and it gives you access to my calendar. So you can pick any time during the times that are available. Our meetings are usually um, 
Our meetings are about 20 to 30 minutes. That's the time that's allocated for each meeting, but you're more than welcome. If you feel that your meeting is going to go beyond that threshold to book two back to back meetings, if you want a full hour to discuss anything, anything. Um, I'm happy to do that. So look in your emails from me and you're going to get one today so you can use that one as well. And I'll even highlight it for you so you could see it specifically in yellow or something. But that's how you would book an appointment with me. And let's see what else you have. If you are uncomfortable building your schedule and you want to wait until an advising meeting with me, that's perfectly fine. Um, I build schedules for a living. It's fun. It's like a big puzzle and you know, we can, we can definitely do that during the meeting. If that's what your concerns are, uh, what is the process for changing majors? And is it easy? Um, yes, it's very easy and that's a good point to bring up as well, because even if you don't change majors right now and you wait until you get to campus in the fall, it's the matter of filling out a form. So uh, you're still going to, uh, you know, meet with somebody within the School of Engineering Advising Hub, that slide that I showed you earlier, the ladies that uh, were all on the, the staircase. Um, all of them are advising the majors. Unless you're leaving the School of Engineering, you will still continue to come to the hub either virtually or in person for those meetings. And the way you can do it right now, um, there's an admissions portal for you guys um, and there's a link that you can actually submit a major change right on that portal. So if you want to, if you, re you realize that mechanical is not for you and you want to change your major, feel free to do that now. And also in the invite that I sent you for this virtual meeting, there's a schedule for all of the majors and their virtual meetings. So if you're remotely interested in say nuclear engineering, you can always attend one of those webinars. You don't have to be in that major to do so. So if you're even considering it, there's no harm in learning more information, okay? Um, okay. In one of the webinars, I heard about a course that gives an introduction to each of the engineering majors. Great question. It's called Engineering for a Better World, Engineering 1200, I think, or 1700. It's actually introduction to. I will include that on my email. And what, what the webinar is, it's a one hour course. It's one credit. So it meets once a week and it's a seminar. And each class features a different major within the School of Engineering. So one class they're going to cover aeronautical engineering. One class they'll cover mechanical, environmental, all of them. You're going to have guest speakers and you're going to have faculty in each major talk about the specifics of that major. So if you're unsure about your major and you picked mechanical because it's broad and you're thinking you might even want to consider industrial, that's a great class to sign up for. And considering it's only one hour a week and it has really no work involved, it's a minimum investment for you. So I think it's a smart move and I will include it. I'm writing it right now with my quacks link. So I will get that information to you because I think having um, as much information to make those decisions empowers you as an individual and it's so smart. So do your homework on these things because there's no wrong answers and there's no wrong path, so I, I would definitely look into it. So do we just use Quacks Yaks as a tool to create a rough outline right before signing up for the actual through SIS? That's exactly what you do. And there's specific details about all of that registration process in the registration guides that we sent you. So it actually walks you through SIPs and how to register add drop for classes, clearing your financial hold, which you all need to make sure you do before you register because it won't let you register otherwise. And what you would do, um, I'll share my screen quick to go back to Quack since we had it open. Um, so if we're here, and we're looking at this, this number right here, this 25528 number, that's called a course registration number. So as you're funneling through your classes and you decide, say this is the section that you really, really want, section four, you're gonna write down that CRN number because that's gonna be the number that you're actually gonna put into when you register in SIS. 
So YAX is the tool, but SIS is the registration piece. Okay. So with the sample schedules that are given for each major, are those more you more used schedules like most freshmen in mechanical take chem in the fall? You're talking specifically about the template. And again, I'm going to share my screen. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. I want to show you the template up close. So the mechanical template, yes, this is a sample schedule. You can definitely register for, you can follow the template. A lot of engineers are all about following the template because that's just the way that they work and that's perfectly fine. Following the template will get you to graduation, but there's a lot of things that happen along the way um, that can change the actual um, template layout for you. For example, if you don't have experience in CAD and you want to switch processes, we're going to move things around. If you wanted to put engineering 1700 into the first semester, we could do that. Chemistry one, I really like you guys to get chemistry over with. And the reason why I say that is if we go back to quacks and we look at chemistry, I'll show you why. Chemistry one meets so often that it's kind of a, it's a schedule suck. So all of the pink here are your chemistry sections. So this is a lab right here. These are your lectures. The ones that meet twice a week at the same time would be a lecture. And this one, just because I know what chemistry's test block is, this is your test block for chemistry. So you only meet at that one when you're actually going to take an exam. And this is something they call a recitation, which is when you might have quizzes or the TAs might go over homework, but all of these meeting times are required. So chemistry monopolizes so much time in the schedule that I really prefer you taking it the first semester just for the fact that it'll be easier for you to schedule other classes later by getting chemistry over and done with. Okay. Um, until what point is the schedule no longer malleable? Also, what is your opinion on double major? Is it going to be too overwhelming? Um, I'm not sure I understand what your question is about malleable. Um, you really do have, um, you have the option to move things around as much as you want, as long as your prerequisites are in place for the courses that you're trying to take. And that's why meeting with your advisor or even looking at the course catalog, which is something else that I might include in my link, I'm writing it down right now. Um, it allows you to look up the prerequisites for courses. So you can go off template and do whatever you want as long as you're taking courses that you have the prerequisites for. And double majors, there's a difference. So double major is actually two separate diplomas that you earn and certain majors um, are very cumbersome. It'll allow, it'll require additional semesters, if not maybe even a full year to pursue. So it really depends on which majors you're thinking about when you're talking about double majoring. Um, there's also something called a dual where we take the key points of two majors like aero and mechanical is our most popular dual within the School of Engineering and we combine them. There's so much overlap with that particular dual that mechanicals are only required to complete 129 credits for their degree and the aero mechanical dual is only 132 credits. So that's definitely something that can be accomplished within that four year timeline. So if you have a specific double or dual in mind, that's something that a personal meeting would help with and we could go over those. If we get a four on AP Calc BC, yes. So RPI requires that you take AP exams and get fives in order for the credits to transfer. So that is something that um, would have to happen. You would have to take Calc one if you did get a four on the exam. Is it possible to take an ECSC major and minor in mechanical and vice versa? So. Mechanical is not available as a minor, but you can minor in electrical 
as a uh, mechanical. So that's something that um, you would want to meet with me to discuss because there are some prerequisite courses that are required to complete it. But a minor is usually four credits and I'm going to share my screen again because I want to show you something else that um, would be helpful to discuss with that. So going back to the template, if you look down at the bottom of your mechanical engineering template, we're giving you courses uh, called free electives. And those free electives are courses that are completely up to you. You get to choose what they are and you get to choose where they go. They don't have to be in your last semester. You could put a free elective in your second semester with some planning. You could do it anywhere you want, really. And a free elective allows you almost like a built-in minor because minors are usually four classes total and you're given three free electives. So you're going to use all of those free electives to pursue a minor and then you would take an additional course to complete it. So free electives are a great tool for strategy if a minor is something that you want to pursue. And um, like I said, there is a minor in electrical. There is a minor in computer systems engineering. Um, if you go to the course catalog, which is something that I'm going to give you the link to at the end of this, you can look at under programs to determine specifically what the minor is and how all of that would look for you. Okay. Um, how would the co-terminal program look in regards to choosing our schedule across the five-year program? So co-terminal, for those who don't know, is the fifth year of, so undergrad, you complete your undergrad in four years or less, depending on credits. Um, the last year, the fifth year, or an additional year, I should phrase it in such, would be master level courses. So the co-term program is you walking away from Rensselaer with a bachelor's degree and a master's degree all within a five-year window. And usually we don't have you even Co-term is not something that needs to be planned in your first year. In fact, you're not even allowed to apply for it until you hit 90 credit mark within the curriculum. So usually students apply late sophomore, early junior year for the co-term program. You have to have a 3.25 and um, it's something that uh, we allow um, students to meet with and discuss, but Actually, when you are accepted into the co-terminal program, you're going to be assigned a co-terminal advisor. So that advisor is also going to help you choose your grad level courses for that fifth year. So the fifth year is basically 30 credits and broken down into two semesters. It's 15 credits of grad level courses each semester in that fifth year. Can you do a dual and a co-terminal program? Yes, uh, depends on the dual, but of course um, the co-terminal, I think the master's program has to be in one focus. I don't think you dual in a master's program, but you can say, for example, if you're an aeromech dual and then you choose mechanical for your master's program or aeronautical for your master's program, yes, that's perfectly acceptable. What score do we need to get for the IB exams? That information's in the registration guide. Um, I think it changed this year, so I actually don't have that information at my fingertips, but we can get that information for you. Um, should I have sent my AP scores to College Board? Yes. Uh, I suggest if you haven't done, haven't sent your scores in, I would do so. Um, they're really, like I said, there's no restrictions in registration right now. We're allowing you to go by what you think your grades are going to be for those scores, including IB as well. So um, we're not going to be kicking you out of a class if you don't have your scores in. But at the start of the semester, we're going to want your scores to make sure that you're actually in the appropriate courses. So if you haven't sent your scores, contact College Board and get those scores into RPI as soon as possible. Should I know what I want to minor or possibly dual major now, or is there more flexibility? The first year is flexible. 
The only time there isn't as much flexibility, and this is something that we should bring up, design innovation, um, it's the um, dual with mechanical, it's a Haas dual. That one you do want to declare earlier if you're interested in doing it. In fact, I'm going to send out information because there's going to be a webinar on the DIS mechanical dual on Wednesday. So if that's something that you're interested in, it's like design innovation. Um, there's a lot of different studios that meet. That would be something that you want to declare early. But all the other duals, minors, all of that can be done at a later time. Um, there's a lot of flexibility within the first year because you're all taking core engineering courses together that you can ultimately transfer within the School of Engineering to another major quite seamlessly. You're not going to lose the courses that you've already taken. So there's a lot of flexibility with changing majors in the first year and declaring duals and also declaring minors. When are official transcripts due? Um, are you talking specifically about uh, high school transcripts? Or where can we see if RPI has, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, you can always contact the registrar. Um, I will include their email. It's just registrar at RPI or new student reg. I'll give you the link. Contact them, make sure you include your RIN and they will confirm whether or not that your transcript has been received. I personally have not seen any transcripts yet because they haven't been loaded on my side of things. So, um, but you can definitely contact the registrar for confirmation. These are all really great. I don't have a due date for the high school transcripts. I suggest that you send them as soon as you can. These are really good questions. One thing I do want to talk about too um, is Haas because there's a lot of questions about Haas. Uh, I don't know if anybody's familiar with the pathways in the registration guides, which I, I can't reiterate enough um, as far as IB scores and all of those things. That, that specific registration guide that you have is going to be a resource for you throughout the entire year because there might be questions that come up and you can say, oh, I don't know if I remember how to do X, Y, and Z. It's all in the registration guide. So keep it close to you. It has your template. It has all contact information across campus. So it's really helpful to have that information. Now, um, as far as pathways are concerned for Haas, that's something that I wanted to touch on for a minute. And, um, you know, it's something that um, some students have been having a lot of questions about. So one of the things that's really important um, within the school of Haas, which you're required to complete five Haas classes, is you're also required to complete pathways. So there's a couple of links here, which I'm also gonna include in a summary for our webinar, and I'll probably send it out first thing in the morning. Um, these are all of the pathway topics that you can look into. So for example, as I mentioned before, design innovation and society, if this is a pathway that's interesting to you, we might want to talk about the dual degree. Um, but if you enjoy economics, for example, we have pathways for economics. We have sustainability. We have environmental futures. We have music, fact and fiction all of these. So these links are going to be helpful for you because what I want you to enroll in in the fall are going to be your Haas inquiry courses. And the fall Haas inquiry courses are listed here. And like I said, I'm going to include these links for your reference, but you know, behind the television screen, what what is that even about? You know, if you click on this link, it's going to give you the course description and it's going to let you know um a little bit more details about these courses. So I really want you to look into these because if you're coming in with Haas credits, 
all the more reason I want you to register for an IHSS class in the fall. So go through these. Minds and Machines is a popular one. Um, students can look into this. And, you know, in the event that you can't get the Haas class that you want, you can always register for an alternative because the IHSS classes are also offered in spring. But I really need you to complete an IHSS class before the end of your first year. So definitely try for this upcoming semester. Okay, so let's see. If you have equal interest in mechanical and electrical, what can be done to nail down a decision between the two? Well, meet with me because there is a dual degree between mechanical and electrical. Um, your registration for the first semester would most likely remain the same as a mechanical engineer. You can put computer science into the equation because it's a required course, but we don't have a finalized template right now. It's in the process of being finalized. So we can meet and we can bring Kara Leith into the equation because she's the advisor for electrical and we can go over those. There is a significant amount of um, credit increase with the dual because there isn't a ton of overlap but we could talk about what that would look like and if you have an equal interest you can do that or you can even pursue mechanical with an electrical minor so those are things that we could definitely talk about but i would want you to book an appointment with me to go into that a little bit more we check with the registrar for high school transcript status yes Absolutely. You can also um, email first year experience because admissions actually should be able to handle that question as well. So either either platform would be fine, but registrar is ultimately the one who's going to receive those transcripts. So that would probably be your first line of email. Do you guys have any other questions? How does everybody feel? Is, I mean, is this something that uh, I threw a lot of information at you? We're recording this, so we can always you can always rewatch this. Um, I'm going to find whether we're putting it on YouTube or if I'm emailing it you, to you directly. I have to talk to my technical person about that detail. But uh, any other questions? Is it possible to make a virtual appointment with you during this summer? You can do both. So you can book an appointment with me virtually and the link is actually gonna be the same. Um, we can meet and we'll have a conversation just like this. Obviously your camera will be on and it'll be almost like we're in person. Or you can email me any quick questions that you have. That's something that students do all summer long. And as the semester begins, um, whether we're going to be on campus full time as staff is still being determined and ironed out. So we might have in person meetings, we might have virtual meetings, but either way, I'm flexible. So however you want to meet is, is fine. Is there a way to see if RPI has received AP scores? Um, I'm going to have to find that information out from first year experience for you. Usually the registrar is the one who would be confirming that. So I'm going to confirm that that is true. So I will, I will get back to you on that. Okay. Can you declare dual majors with majors outside of the School of Engineering, like computer science, and plan ahead from the beginning, or is that a process that would happen later? That's a great question. So, again, it goes back to meeting with me. We can discuss so many different avenues, and if you're interested in declaring something like a dual major outside of the School of Engineering, um, you can definitely do that. But let me put something together for computer science here because computer science is unlike most majors. If you want to declare a dual with computer science, you actually have to get pretty far into their curriculum before you can actually declare the dual. Um, so what that would mean is you would have to take computer science, which is the first course that is on their program. And then the next course is data structures. And 
if you read Reddit, if you talk to any computer science majors, data structures has the reputation of being the most difficult course on campus. So in order to declare a dual with mechanical and computer science, you have to complete computer science by getting a B or better in order to actually be able to declare the dual. Can you start the process in your first year? Of course. What that would mean is meeting with me, we would fit computer science one into your first year, and we would move things around to make accommodations for that schedule. But I want to look at and have a conversation with you and look at the possibility of credits that you're bringing in to make the determination on how we would adjust your schedule accordingly. So long and short, absolutely, you can declare duals. And the bottom line with most of this stuff is talk to me because there really isn't a clear cut path for anyone. We kind of customize as we go along, which is what makes it fun and unique. Um, when we book an appointment, do we go through a portal and register that way or do we just see your schedule and then email you? No, when you book an appointment through the link in my signature on all of my emails, it brings you to my calendar and you get to fill us fill one of the time slots and register at that moment. So you don't have to email me. It cuts out the middle person. It makes it very easy. And then you come up on my, my calendar and you'll also receive reminders about your appointment. So it's helpful for both of us to do it that specific way rather than emailing me. I mean, if you have questions, email me, but if you're looking to actually book an advising appointment, do it through my calendar. I'm able to see if AP scores in high school transcripts were received by RPI in the applicant status portal. Thank you for writing that, Julia. That's something that as an advisor, I actually don't have um, access to. So that is something that maybe perhaps everybody would want to look at. Um, if I didn't, if you didn't hear what I said, uh, Julia mentioned that she could see AP scores and her high school transcripts that she can receive that they were, see that they were received in the applicant status portal. So that might save you an email to the registrar as well. Thank you for that. Does anybody else have any questions? Well, guys, I want to thank you for spending your evening with me. And um, like I said, I am recording this, so we have this information going forward. And book an appointment with me if you want to talk about the specifics of your situation. And you've been great, so thank you so much. And and thank you, for everybody, for helping, too, because sometimes it does take a team to to get all the information because there is so much you know so we navigate together and um going forward use me as a resource for schedule building whatever you want to do and try to do it sooner than later just because i find that my schedule kind of fills up quickly around registration time so um you know i i wouldn't wait too long to make an appointment and if forever for any reasons, if you're unable to make an appointment or you live in a different time zone or something's coming up, email me because I do have some evening that, you know, perhaps I can hop on and we can have a chat. Okay. So thanks again. And I'm going to stop recording. And if anybody has any.